The aim of this video is to provide you with data for linear motion analysis. We have an inclined plane and are going to let a steel ball bearing roll down it from different distances. So here we go, 90 centimetres, it took 1.84 seconds. And the student's trying it from 80 centimetres, and this time it's 1.700 seconds. Now I've used Logger Pro to get these times. 70, second, 70 centimetres, 1.6 seconds, and so on. Now normally you'd plot the independent variable, which is the distance or the displacement along the ramp on the x-axis. But the point of this is to put T on the x-axis or the horizontal axis and displacement up the side on the y-axis. And you should get a curve that is uh, y is proportional to x squared. So we're continuing to get data. And the second type of graph would be t on the x-axis and the final velocity on the y-axis. Now I've taken the data from the video. You'll notice up here I've put time first, followed by displacement, because what I want to do is have time along the horizontal axis so if I put it first in Excel, it automatically does that, and displacement will be in the vertical axis or the y-axis. So let's plot this and see what we get. Now I'll just do a, a simple scatter plot, like that, and you'll see it gives what we expect, which is a nice curve, a y is proportional to x squared curve. That's what you'd expect for uniform acceleration. Now let's put a trend line in that, so I click on that, Go to trend line. Now I don't want a linear trend line. I want a power trend line. So I go and have a look at power. So I've added that and you can see it's given that nice curve. And I'll display the equation on the chart and get an R squared value. So there they are there. I'll just make them a little bit bigger. Okay, 12 point, you can see them. Okay, what you'll notice is that it's y is proportional to x squared, and that's what I said we should get for uniform acceleration, which you'd expect from the, um, the video we had, uh, ball rolling down this aluminium ramp. Now, the next thing I can do is to plot the velocity up the side and the time along the bottom. Firstly, I'd have to calculate the velocity. Now, I want the final velocity, so the velocity formula will be just equal to the displacement versus time, so that's those two cells. And that gives us the average velocity going down the ramp. The final velocity for uniform acceleration will be twice the average. So I multiply that by 2, and that will give me the final velocity. There it is there. Now, I've already put that as two decimal places. Originally, this uh, value up here was general, which gave me about four or five decimal places, so I've cut it back by using number and then cut it back to two decimal places. I'll just fill that down, and you'll notice there are the velocities. Now they're increasing, of course, as the displacement gets from small displacement up to a big displacement. The final velocity, as it goes off the end of the ramp, is bigger. Now what I'd like to do is plot velocity versus time. So I'll select these two columns. There's the, the time column and the velocity. And I'll insert a scatter graph like that. Put it here to make it neat. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, get a line of best fit through that. So I can add a trend line. Now this time it'll be a linear trend line. So I can go for linear. But let's have a look at getting some more options here. Now I'll set the D, display the equation and display the R squared value. There they are there. Now you'll notice the y-intercept is negative. Now I'll show you that by actually plotting the um, or making the uh, line go back to zero. So I've highlighted the line I want to use, and I'll go backwards a number of periods. Now you'll notice 
first period plotted here is at about 0.6 of a second. Now that's this value up here, 0.64 seconds is this point here. So let's go backwards 0.64 and we'll get the line going back to the um, x equals zero point. Now you'll notice the y-intercept is point negative 0 0.05. Now that's saying that even when the time is zero, there's a negative velocity. Now that's some sort of systematic error that's occurred in the um, in the video or in the uh, demonstration. It's most likely that when the ball is released, it's not cleanly released. It might have even been given a bit of a tap in the negative direction. So that's a, a systematic error that can be overcome. Now what we can do um, is just have a look at this. We can set the um, the intercept to zero. So let's set that to zero and we'll get rid of the old one. And let's try it again. Um, set the intercept to zero and we'll go backwards 0 0.64 and this is what we get. Okay, now it goes nicely through zero. Um, the equation for the line will now be a little bit different. So we'll put that and we'll put the R squared. But that's just to show if we did manage to eliminate the systematic error, that's what it would look like. You can see it's got a nice R squared, 0.986. That means the line is a, uh, or the equation is a good fit for that data. Most of the points are pretty much on the line. It's indicated by the high value for the R squared. Anything over about 0.98 is considered quite reasonable for a physics class. So the formula says y is equal to 0.52x. Now, if you divide, you know the, uh, the gradient of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. So according to this equation, the acceleration is 0.5277 meters per second squared. And that's constant because it's a, they we're not changing the angle of the ramp. Now you'd finish that off by adding titles to this. Now the vertical title is the velocity and it has the symbol V and the units would be meters per second squared, but that's tricky to do here. So you, the simplest way I find is to do it like that, and that'll give it looking a bit wrong, but you can then highlight those two and make them go as a superscript. And along the bottom, it's the time, and that's the symbol T, and it's in seconds, and that'll look like that. <clears throat> and of course, you'd like to finish off the title, so it's velocity, I think we can just do versus time. And that's how we display our graph. That's the end of that.